People that say this and say this stuff consistently are losers. So listen for these phrases. And if you've heard yourself say these phrases, make sure you stop. Because to be clear, if I'm saying, if you've said these phrases before, it doesn't mean you are now forever and will always be a loser. But in my opinion, you need to stop saying this stuff in order to be a winner and in order to be a winner consistently. All right, so here's the first one. If you've been in the boxing facility or boxing arena, been around boxers for any period of time, you've heard this one. He can't hit, coach. This is what a fighter says. It's going out there and they can't stop the punches from hitting them. And then they try to excuse it away by saying, he can't hit, coach. He doesn't have any power. What does that matter, champ? What does it matter? Doesn't matter at all. Let's not get hit by it. Or if he can't stop the punches and they can't hit, they got powder puff punches or whatever you're saying, hit them off of it. Because if they're not hitting you very hard, I don't know about you, but if someone's not hitting me very hard, it's easier for my, now me to crack them with punches right after, or right in the middle of them throwing. I have no respect for their power anymore, so I should just walk through them like a knife through butter. But more often than not, boxers that say, he can't hit coach, are just excusing away them getting tagged by punches, all right? Here's another one, similar. I couldn't feel his punches, coach. I couldn't feel his punches. Typically, this is said after the fight. I couldn't even feel his punches. His punches didn't have any power. I couldn't even feel them. Well, again, champ, what does that matter? If he can't feel the punches, go after him, all right? There's no reason. That's not a reason to lose. He couldn't hit hard. I couldn't feel his punches. That's not a reason to lose. Not a reason for you to, to it's not an excuse for your loss, all right? Here's another one. Uh, he was just running. All right, again, these all kind of go along a similar line, right? Because you're almost maybe visualizing, or maybe you yourself are this type of fighter where you're fairly hard hitting, you're kind of a brawler type aggressive, and a lot of these phrases actually go into this excusing away type stuff, all right? Because if someone just mauls you and tears you apart and chases after you and runs you down and takes you out, it's pretty hard to say all this stuff. So this is typically someone that, you know, they, they're tough, they, they got some okay power, uh, but they got beat by who? A superior boxer, all right? He was just running, coach. He was just running the whole time. Well, champ, again, maybe, maybe it's the coach's fault. Maybe the coach hasn't equipped them with how to deal with a mover and how to break that thing down. But at the end of the day, the responsibility does fall upon the fighter, all right? I'm one of my boxers right now that's an undefeated pro fighter. I remember when I was working with him as an amateur, he said something very profound that I thought was beautiful. And it made, it helped me know that he was gonna go somewhere. And that was that, he was telling one of our other teammates, one of our other fighters, he's saying, yeah, you know, if Coach Keith doesn't show me something or whatever, and I lose a fight, let's have him in a fight, I lose, and some guy's doing something in there, I'm, I was never taught by Coach how to deal with. It's not Coach's fault, it's my fault, why? Because Coach can't literally teach me every little itsy bitsy, tiny, eensy, teensy weensy thing. I have to be watching films, studying fighters, things like that. Because again, your coach cannot literally babysit you and walk you through every single little nuance and slight difference of a move or how someone might do something again they'll equip you with this knowledge and the ideas and concepts and observe yourself as well but and also make sure you're not making mistakes but they cannot give you all of the literally thousands of different nuanced situations and moves in boxing you can talk to your coach about these things you can study on your own and come back and talk to your coach about this stuff but again no matter how great your coach is they literally can't teach you every little itsy teensy thing right anyway so that was one thing. He's running, he's running, he's running, coach. Doesn't matter. You need to know how to beat that. And if someone knows how to beat that and then is saying that as an excuse after the fight for why they lost, it's just an excuse. You got nothing to do with it. It has no, it has no power there. You're literally taking power away from yourself by saying all these phrases. And that's why when you say these things, you are literally casting a vote for yourself to be a loser versus casting yourself a vote to be a winner. All right, it's a different way you talk to yourself to be a winner. Uh, I hurt him. Here's, there's another one. I hurt him, all right? Typically at the end of the fight, oh man, I had him hurt. I had him hurt, right? Past tense, I had him hurt. You had him hurt, well, you didn't get him out of it. You had him hurt, you didn't get him out of it. Okay, you had him hurt, you lost the fight. He's a human being. If I take a baseball bat and I hit someone in the head <laughs> with the baseball bat, they're gonna get hurt. Yeah, you're throwing punches at someone. You hurt him, good for you. Here's a cookie, how about you get the win next time, right? How about you get him out of there? Again, you're casting a spell on yourself to just not win, all right? Uh, because again, you only say stuff like that when you didn't get the decision. And uh, here's another one. If I had 
more rounds. If I only had more rounds, I would have won. Well, again, champ, 99.999% of the time, when you go into a fight, you know exactly how many rounds you got going into that. All right, it's been very seldom. I've ever seen a situation where a fighter did not know when they were in the, going into the ring or preparing even for a fight how many rounds they're going to be doing as a pro and a, or even a, a, as an amateur, but also specifically in boxing. All right? I know sometimes in some of the other martial arts, all this stuff can change around, but regardless, <laughs> majority of the time, you know how many rounds you got. So prepare for those rounds. And you know if you're in a three-round amateur fight, you got three. All right? So when you're going into round three, you know there's nothing else after that. So therefore saying... If I only would have had a fourth round, I would have got another. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. It's relevant. You know, if you were behind the first round and let's say the second round was close and you maybe was behind, you know you must dominate that third round. All right? So, <laughs> again, oh, here's another one. Here's another one. This is a good one. And this is something that if you're a boxer, you might have said this and not realize that you're casting a spell for yourself to be a loser. All right? He keeps holding me, coach. He keeps holding me. Again, there's an answer for every move, gang. From the majority of fouls outside of someone just literally hitting you in your groin, all right, or just like some of those flagrant fouls, outside of that, there is a way to deal with all the lesser fouls, all right? There's many, many ways, and you need to, again, equip yourself as a fighter, but also, if you're a coach, work on, like I have throughout my 13 years coaching of helping my guys and gals know how to break through these things, how to deal with someone that's holding. Because again, you know, when I boxed, I, I didn't discover, okay, because my coach didn't teach me how to break out of a hole, but that doesn't matter. It's not his fault. I didn't look myself until I stopped fighting. And then I started working with people to figure out how to break out of holds. And there's ways to do it. Many, many, many ways to do it. So just merely the fact that he was holding me. He was holding me. The ref wasn't breaking it up. Whatever, it doesn't matter. You need to know how to work out of it, all right? If a, if a jiu-jitsu jiu practitioner can work out of being held on the ground and doesn't just go, they're grappling me, they're grappling me, then you can do it too, all right? So again, let's talk like a winner, not like a loser. They robbed me, all right? That's one. I'm saying it's loser talk. Sometimes it is the truth. Sometimes it is the truth. Sometimes you hit someone nine times in each of the rounds and they hit you one time, and that one shot wasn't that hard, and your nine shots were decent, they were definitely scoring blows, and you still lost the fight, they robbed you. Now, again though, even if that is the truth in that situation, what are you gonna do with it? Just walking around saying, yeah, they robbed me, they robbed me, they robbed me, it gives you no power, it gives you no ability, it gives you no pathway to improve. Think about it, when you walk away from your fight, Let's say you dominate the heck out of the other person and the judges gave it to the other person. They didn't give it to you. You walking around now protecting your ego saying, they robbed me, they robbed me. Yeah, how was your fight? Oh, they robbed me, they robbed me. What are you telling yourself? You're not giving yourself any word to improve. And at the end of the day, I believe that at least as an athlete, as a competitive person, you should always be striving for how to get better, for how to ensure people can't rob you. Because there is a way to ensure it, right? That's the beautiful thing about boxing. The beautiful thing about boxing is that one punch can change the whole thing and that, you know, you're allowed to get the person out of there. You're allowed to not leave it up to the judges, all right? And particularly in the pro game, when you have more rounds, you can definitely have, you have the opportunity to not leave it up to the judges, all right? Uh, then if, uh, oh yeah, if I was a pro, I would have won. If it was a pro fight, I would have won because I hit him with, the harder, more effective punches. He hit me, he hit me with a bunch of little just snapshots and whatever. And if it was pro, I would have won. Well, it wasn't pro. And you knew that going in. I'm sorry, when you had the helmet on your head, did you think this was a pro fight? When we were preparing for this, did you think we were turning pro? Did we get our pro license? So again, if it was a pro fight, oh, no. Nah. Nope, nope, doesn't matter. It's not relevant. If you're an amateur, you're working at being a good amateur. If you're a pro, you're working at being a good pro. If you're transitioning from amateur to pro, yeah, maybe that's the thing. But majority of the time, when someone says that, if it was a pro fight, I would have won. It is, again, loser talk. All right. Now, the last one, big loser talk here. If I would have been in better shape, I would have won. If I would have been in better shape, I would have won. And again, there is maybe, you could argue, a little bit of power in that statement of, well, therefore, get in better shape. But you don't need to talk like that. You need to admit and own up to the fact that the other person beat you, all right, and that they were better prepared, maybe better skilled, 
Maybe their mind was locked more on target and didn't have all this loser crap going on in their head. And accept that fact and now work on it. Someone beat you, somebody was in better shape than you, someone didn't hit you that hard, but they still tagged you up and won a decision. Give that person credit, as you would want to get credit as well for a job well done. Give them credit, give them, you know, any type of, uh, you know, positive statement back to them good fighter, and don't go around talking crap about them afterwards behind their back, all right? Own up to it, own up to the loss, because in my opinion, and through working with fighters, this is all I've seen has ever worked. When you do that, you can go on to bigger and better things and have victories in the future. But if you're just trying to get a victory in a loss by covering up your ego, by protecting yourself, your ego, making yourself feel better, so you have a nice little line to say to your friends and family, they're like, why did you lose? Then you're not preparing yourself for glorious victories in the future. All right, guys, this is Coach Keith Kapner. If you like this video, make sure you click like and subscribe, share it with somebody, maybe someone you train with, if you're maybe a fighter or maybe with yourself. Some of these things are like, man, I've said these things. I need to stop saying these things. When I box, I said some of these things. He can't hit, he can't hit. It doesn't matter, Keith, you're getting hit and you're not hitting him more, all right? Or if you're a coach, share this with your fighter as well and make sure you watch out. Don't tolerate. I recommend having a zero tolerance policy for all this type of talk because I fell into it early when I was coaching and I've heard so many coaches fall into it too of They'll, they'll, they'll play along with it because the coach wants to protect their ego as well. And I understand that. I've been there before. And they'll, they'll tolerate that fighter saying all that stuff. And then other team members hear those phrases. And they're like, oh, that's a great excuse. Okay, cool. So if I box a, uh, someone who's a good mover and a real sharp, slick boxer that's not a big power puncher, and they tag me up and dance around me, I can just be like, they were running. Or, oh, man, if they were just like drilling me with all these combos, and I wasn't able to really hit them as much as I want to, I can say, well, they couldn't hit, they couldn't hit, they, nothing hurt, nothing hurt me, right? All this stuff that only serves one thing to protect the ego, and it does not serve why you should be in boxing as a competitive amateur or pro, which is to do what? Which is to win. Get after it, guys.